The Arizona Cardinals suffered a very disappointing end to the 2020 season, seeing Kyler Murray get injured and just barely missing the playoff picture. And you could tell going into this offseason, they went into it with a vengeance. The Cardinals want to be put into that playoff team pedigree, not just a team that's on the outside looking in. So, did they do enough this offseason to be put in that category, or did they lose more than they gained? The plan for this video is talking about their free agency and draft moves that I'm going to transition to their roster as a whole. And then I'm going to talk about what I think it means for them during the 2021 season. Did they do enough to be put in that playoff category? So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with their free agency moves because they brought in a lot of veterans and they also lost a good group of guys. So let's start off with the biggest signing they had this offseason, and that was easily DN D lineman, Houston legend JJ Watt. After he asked to be released, JJ Watt got his wish granted, and no one was talking about the Cardinals. And, you know, in hindsight, people definitely should have. This Cardinals team is very good, they had a bunch of cap space and their D-line needed help. We're gonna talk about that group later, but JJ Watt is a much needed is a much needed veteran presence and i think he'll do a great job lined up with another great edge rusher dn in chandler jones so i think that was a great pickup kind of more of their free agency moves but they they brought in wide receiver aj green which to me is really interesting their wide receiver group was already kind of full then they brought in aj green then they drafted rondell moore but i do think bringing in another tall kind of that number one a wide receiver archetype they don't need the number one they obviously have deandre hopkins but i do think bringing in that tall guy that can go up and get jump balls i do think aj green can still be very serviceable so yeah i do think that was a good pickup bringing in james connor as well to help out the running group they already lost Kenyon drake they needed to bring in someone to play alongside chase edmonds and I don't think James Conner is a great back. That's why he signed for $1.75 million. But, I mean, I think he's on that same tier as Kenyon Drake is. Yeah, they're fine. There's nothing special about him. So, I do think that was a good damage control pickup. Then they also brought in Malcolm Butler after losing Patrick Peterson. I I'm going to start off with the Malcolm Butler talk. Malcolm Butler's good, not great. There's really nothing special about him. He is a good playmaker, though. He, he will get the ball when needed. Obviously, the most notable being that Super Bowl versus Seattle. But can I? But in talking about their losses, losing Hassan Reddick inside linebacker was easily their biggest. I do think because he just had a breakout season, I do think they should have done a bunch to bring him back in. Especially when you see he signed for like a one-year, eight million dollar deal with the Panthers. I do think the Cardinals should have coughed that up. I do not know though if there was disputes with the coaching staff, maybe with the front office. I don't know if that was happening, but putting that aside, I do think losing him was a big blow. They did address it during the draft, but we're going to talk about that later. But losing Hassan Reddick, that could have been a leader for your defense. That does suck. Then they lost the leader of their defense, like one of their actual leaders in Patrick Peterson. Yeah, that was a major loss. You could say what you want about him being older, but he still played 98% of the snaps last year. I don't care. If you think he's great or bad, he was the starter for a reason, and he was definitely a veteran there for many, many years. Then they also lost Kenyon Drake. We already talked about that. He's good, not great. Moving on to the draft, their first round pick. A bunch of Cardinals fans did not like the Zaven Collins linebacker from Tulsa pickup. I love it. I personally think this is a great pick considering the circumstance of losing Hassan Reddick. This was the best, you know, kind of damage control pickup they could do. I don't blame them one bit. Zaven Collins is an athletic freak, and I personally loved him coming out of Tulsa. So, I mean, I do really like the pick. Then in the second round, they brought in Rondell Moore, who... This is another pick to me where it's the same with the AJ Green. Like, the wide receiver room is very full right now. I do think Rondell Moore is very good, by the way. I do think this was a good pick. But kind of, we're going to talk about it later, but the wide receiver room is very full right now. Then kind of during the later rounds, they did address the secondary, which I do like. A bunch of fans were saying Caleb Farley at 16. I would not blame them one bit. I do think getting a cornerback during the first or second round would have been great and very beneficial, but bringing in Malcolm Butler kind of showed 
yeah, they're probably not drafting Caleb Farley oh, with the 16th pick. So, uh, yeah, that was my thoughts on their free agency and their draft. I do think they did well. So, let's transition to their roster as a whole now, starting off with the offense. We already know they have their quarterback with Kyler Murray, so we're not even going to talk about that. But let's talk about the wide receiver group, because this is the most interesting part like, of their team to me. Because they have a great wide receiver room. They obviously have DeAndre Hopkins, but then they brought in A.J. Green and Rondell Moore to a wide receiver room that already had Christian Kirk and Andy Isabella, and potentially Larry Fitz, hopefully he comes back. But they already had these guys, and then they brought in A.J. Green and Rondell Moore. So it's clear Isabella and Kirk, one or both of them are gone once this season is over. A bunch of people criticize Christian Kirk not being their slot guy. I do agree with that, but they just brought in Isabella and Rondell Moore who can be seen as slot guys. So I do think Christian Kirk's probably being pushed out of this wide receiver room. I do hope Larry Fitz comes back. He's probably not though. I hope he does. Shout out Larry Fitz. Then moving on to their offensive line group, bringing in Rodney Hudson was their best move, and I did not even mention it during the first six minutes of this video. It was their best move, hands down, bar none. Absolute fucking stud. Their offensive tackles in uh, Calvin Beecham and DJ Humphreys are both good. I do think their tackles and their centers are set, but their guards, just uh, like Justin Pugh and Brian Winters, are good but they're penalty machines they combined for either 15 or 16 penalties last year and they need to address that somehow they're both fine guards but they are penalty machines hopefully maybe josh jones who was drafted during the third round of last year's draft who who i mean the cardinals love can maybe take over one of those guard spots that would be really cool to see that young guy step up then kind of talking about their other uh, running back room we already mentioned it it's it's really not much different from last year uh, there's nothing great nothing bad about it they definitely do kind of need a stud there to help out that offense but i don't blame them for going for wide receiver first and kind of helping kyler murray's pass game just keep on getting better and better then we're gonna move on to the defense because there's really nothing else to talk about with their offense their tight end group is meh moving on to their defense let's start off with the d lineman I already mentioned it, the J.J. Watt signing was very needed and a great pickup. They have two young guys in Leckie Fotu, who was drafted in the fourth round of last year, and Zach Allen, third round of 2019, who are both good young guys. Zach Allen uh, led, led, led the D-line in tackles last year. I do think bringing in J.J. Watt, very needed. Very, very needed. Loki Fetu and Zach Allen could use that veteran presence. Then, you know, he's also not a bum. J.J. Watt may be kind of old at this point, but he is no bum. Let's talk about their linebacking uh, core because we're eight minutes in and this is probably my favorite thing to talk about. They have Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins now. That's awesome. That is awesome. I think that Simmons is going to break out. He played a lot towards the end of last season. He definitely had a disappointing... Uh, a uh, rookie season with all the hype that was going into him this year but I do think that he played well towards the end of last season now having now having him and Zayvon Collins two athletic versatile freaks this is going to be awesome and Vance Joseph should have a field day with this I do think losing Reddick was unnecessary but I think that Simmons and Collins considering the circumstance of losing Hassan Reddick is a fucking awesome duo Moving on to the secondary, the uh, cornerbacks being neglected until like the third, fourth round is, you know, that is definitely sketchy. I do love their draft, but that is sketchy. I do think the Malcolm Butler pickup was good, not great, but I do think losing, you know, Pat Pete and bringing in Malcolm Butler, that's a fine trade-off. I don't think much of that, but I do think he'll be fine. I do like Marco Wilson for the fourth round, so I do think that you got Butler, Wilson, and Alfred right now. That's a fine cornerback group. There's nothing really to brag about there, but, you know, it should be able to hold their own. Then when you look at the safeties, they obviously have Buda Baker. And kind of going back to the cornerbacks, I don't know how I forgot him, but Byron Murphy is also their second-round pick from 2019. That's a fine cornerback group. There's nothing special, but there's nothing bad. The 
bad the secondary is obviously led by buddha baker who got a massive contract he is a beast him you have him chandler jones plus isaiah simmons and then zavin collins those are your four defensive building blocks that is fucking great so now let's talk about what i think this means for the 2021 season with the cardinals will they be a playoff team maybe <laughs> i know that's a bad conclusion of this but with a new 18 week season and looking at their schedule the nfc west Seattle is going to be good because they have Russell Wilson. The 49ers are going to be good. Just please, God, just stay healthy. Then the Rams are my current favorite to win the NFC. So I do think the Cardinals did enough to become a better football team. I do think they're better than what they were in 2020. I think the Cardinals, especially with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury taking that next step together, they will be very good. With the expanded playoffs, I think they'll make it. I do think that they will make it, but in that division, there are no guarantees, and I'm just a guy with a microphone. So I do think, though, that overall, they had a good offseason. They, they went through some changes. They lost Patrick Peterson, who was a franchise cornerstone, but he was getting older. They did lose Hassan Reddick, which that was a blow, but I think they're entering a new era. They brought in Zayvon Collins. Malcolm Butler will hopefully be there for a few years. I wish they did more to address that secondary but I think Arizona did what they had to do to become more respectable and to become that playoff team so yeah that's gonna do it for me today if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and then if you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button trying to get that thousand within the next two months that would be fucking sick so uh yeah hope hope you enjoyed and have a great day